Hello and welcome to episode 24 of the Academic Vertex as we look back on game week 16 and the festive period is in full swing. Rotation is climax and we stare at game week 17 coming at us Saturday. With me today, Casey and Gabe. We've got a lot to talk about today as we look ahead to Kane versus Sun, talk about Mo or No Solo when it comes to premium combination. What is the best one going forward? We'll also touch on some defensive thoughts over the festive period and time permitting. We'll finish up with thoughts on hits and early transfers. Let's start with Casey. How are you doing tonight? Talk us through your game week 16. Yeah, how's it going, guys? Uh Pretty good week, mostly down to Captain Sala. Um, I kept him for the Bournemouth fixture. I was going to ship him before the Bournemouth fixture, but after he got the rest midweek, I figured he'd start. And I thought that it was a really good idea to captain him against a really bad Bournemouth defense. And I even I couldn't have expected that, that kind of game. But um, yeah, we'll talk about that later. I guess Salah Sala definitely starting to look like last season Salah over the last I don't know three or four weeks. Um, other than that, though, it was kind of I had five one pointers in my team. Uh, uh, you know, a couple of good 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 hauls, but to eighty two minus eight, I made up almost all of the ground I lost in that mid midweek fixture when I scored thirty six when everyone was kind of in the fifties and sixties. So I made up most of that ground back, and so I'm just outside the top 50K right now, which is fine for this time of year. It's pretty easy to rise in the next you know, five or six game weeks uh, with the games coming thick and fast. That it is. Gabe, how'd you do in game week 16? I, I did pretty consistent to the, the previous week, actually, as it's my third red arrow in a row here. Um, Luckily for me, they've all been, rel I guess, relatively small red arrows. I was up to about 13K, and now I'm down to, to about 39K. Um, I, I made the, uh, you know, I, I heard several several people make the same mistake of doing the uh, the Hazard to, to David Silva and Arn Arnautovic to Obama Yang mistake of the week. That was, I think, the mistake of the week. Um, and, and so I was a part of that. Um, I... I I have mixed emotions. Uh, my red arrows have generally been uh, been pretty small here, and and I, I look at my team and I think you know I'm, I'm confident in it. I, I do see some mistakes I'm trying to patch up, but it was uh, it was not a disastrous week given that I did not have that I don't have Salah. So uh, given that fact, I don't have him at all, and I still came up with 56 points on all the rest of my team. I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Captain Obama Yang. Got, you know, worked out in the end, I guess. Uh, Philippe Anderson and Richarlison producing again. Those two uh, are, are becoming pretty consistent now. And then Robertson boy, with a nice game. And I know, and, and I started, uh, I started Alonso as as we talked about last um, last time when we said start your studs. Um, and there it is. That's why. Yeah, this was the uh, first week that I actually finished beneath the uh, average. I only scored 45 points. Um, it was a 50,000K red arrow for me, pushing me out of the top 100,000 to about 130K. Again, it was all defense. Alonzo, Robertson, Van Dyke uh, pulling their weight. I uh, like, like Gabe, I kept it a bomb yang. And that was, uh, that was it on my points. It was uh, a little bit frustrating. Um, you know, I sold Sala two weeks ago, but got fairly good returns, you know, two weeks ago with Sané and the captain on Kane. So I can't be too uh, too upset when I, I see Sala return the hat trick against Bournemouth. Um, you know, Kane's got a good good fixture this week. So I, I have no doubt that I'll rebound here on the coming week, two weeks. Uh, still have some issues to sort out in this midfield of mine, but uh, still feeling pretty positive. Got two free transfers going into game week 17. So our first topic up, it's uh, Kane versus Son. And uh, when we look at Spurs, many fantasy managers are considering one or both of the players. Uh, those who have the budget have been considering bringing in Harry Kane as over 51,000 managers have brought him in ahead of game week 17. And over the last two weeks, 350,000 managers have moved on Kane. He's now owned by 30.4 managers across all of FPL and over 70% by the top 1,000 managers. Son, on the other hand, at 8.5, he's been brought in by 130K this week, 
422K managers over the last two weeks. Currently, he's a huge differential owned by just 4.3 of managers across the FPL, 9.2 in the top 1,000. Gabe, let's start with you. Do you try to fit in the cheaper Sunday or starting 11 or consider major moves and try to overhaul your team to kick Kane in over the festive period? That ownership of Kane in the top 1,000 is pretty shocking. Uh, 70%. 70.7 yeah i mean i i'm i haven't really considered kane um there are there are several other players i i i just i don't know i i, I like more uh I, I think are more involved in the uh, kind of the point of the attack at a, a consistent basis but given that number i think that number tilts it between sun and kane that tilts it to kane for me especially if if you're thinking most people uh considering this dilemma are probably considering maybe sun and salah versus uh, Kane and, and somebody else, right? Um, it's probably maybe a Salah or, or Kane uh, conversation or a, an obama Yang kane conversation. Um, but given that number, I would probably tilt it towards Kane uh, in, 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 that, in that scenario be, be, between those two. Also, given the fact that, that Sun is, you know, he's, uh, he'll be around for another month. That very true. Casey, how about you? I know you already have Sala. <laughs> what are your plans? Well, I have Sala and Kane. Mm -hmm. and Sterling and Sané. So I feel fine with my premium assets. Um, I I had the money to go to Kane. I went hazard to Felipe Anderson, Arnautovic to Kane, which obviously was a much better we, uh, double switch for than most people did last week. Um, got pretty lucky with that. Um, Felipe Anderson's really a placeholder for Richarlison. So I'm fine with it. I, I got him thinking it was like, okay, I'll have him for three or four weeks. He's got great fixtures. And then if Richarlison starts to look good, if Everton starts to look good, or if Felipe Anderson does great, I hold him. But I, I got Kane because I had the money to do it. That was basically the simple choice I had um, because I thought it'd be easier to go up to Kane and down to Obama Yang than to go to Obama crap. I have to get Kane because he's firing. Everyone's got him. He's just killing my rank, and I have to do a double move to find a million or something like that to upgrade. So it was really a, it was really a kind of hedging my bets sort of move to get him. I figured it's a lot easier to downgrade if you make a mistake than to upgrade if you made a mistake. Um, I think Sun's a great option. Um, Kane is a safe captaincy choice just because everyone's going to captain him that has him hit you're not gonna like fall down the rankings too much so i figured just on that i figured it'd be a lot easier to to go with uh, kane and captain him than to get sun and because the worst case scenario is you captain sun he gets benched kane plays scores a brace everyone's captain him you lose 30 points on the field very easily so yeah, that, that was kind of my thought. It was just—it was almost just a shield choice of like it—it's it, just a lot safer to play that way than to to do something too risky. Yeah, I weighed up. Uh, I weighed up the Kane versus uh, Salah. You know, like I said a couple of weeks ago, and just looking at Liverpool's fixtures, they they just didn't didn't come up. I know Man U's not the, not the Man U we've seen in years past. Arsenal doesn't have that scary of a defense, especially with the injuries they have at center back. So basically, we're just looking at a, an away trip to Man City for uh, Liverpool to deal with. That game ended up early in the year, nil-nil. So, you know, but I, I just looked at uh, Spurs fixtures and thought, you know, I, I mean, Kane's had some some decent form. He had scored uh, three, and five, uh, three and four weeks. And um, you know, I, I was just looking at fixtures and looking at the ownership numbers. I continue to to monitor those top thousand. I, you know, right or wrong, it's it's the one stat that I continue to look at over all others, just to try to keep pace. And Kane's there, and and Salah isn't. Uh, I mean, Salah's not even in the most owned across FPL when you take out all the inactive squads. So yeah. I figured Kane could hurt me. Salah probably can't, even though I did get burned this week. You know, if I would have had him. Still had him from two weeks ago. Obviously, I would have captained him, but I still feel confident going without Salah, at least through the Man City game. Come January, I'll reevaluate. And, you know, like you, Casey, I've got plenty of money wrapped up in defense that I could easily move two or three of my premium defenders out and most likely make room for, you know, two guys like you had, Sterling and Salah, if need be.
Yeah. One, one thing is I didn't have to choose between Sala and Kane. I could have both, um, which was nice. Um, and everyone's talking about, well, you have to cut, you know, you can't captain or you don't want to captain Sala. At this point, he's enough of a differential that I can just keep him, not captain him. And if he hauls, I still rise up the ranks because most people sold him by now, at least the people around me in the rankings. So I'm okay with just keeping him, not captaining him, and then having him for after City still in my team and not worrying about that spot. Um, but I can see why if you don't have like a City midfielder or if you don't have either Kane or Obama Yang up front, who those one of those three will probably be your captain over the next four or five game weeks. I can see why you would want to downgrade Sala in order to fund one of those captain options. So I had a, I was wondering if there's anything to the idea that once, once Sun goes to the Asia games, that Kane actually becomes uh, more valuable because he becomes more of a focal point of, of their attack. Whereas Sun, Sun scores goals and maybe that some of those goals would, would go to Kane if he weren't around. Um, so, I mean, take, take, taking away the fact that around that time is probably when we're going to start to see uh, Aguero come back and all that, but just in and of itself, I, I wonder if, uh, what, what happens to Kane with the subtraction of Sun. Yeah. Well, Sun allows Kane to not expend as much energy, which is nice <laughs> for the fixture period. Cause Sun just runs and runs and runs and runs and he runs and he runs and he runs. And it's all he does is run around like a crazy person. And then it allows Kane to kind of just be in the right spot, not need to stretch defenses. Sun also draws a lot of penalties. I, I mean, I think I think Sun makes a Kane a good option, and no Sun is probably still good for Kane. I think the big th the big thing for Kane is Ali and Erickson both being healthy again, because he doesn't have to drop as deep to create. I think without Erickson and Ali, he was really really needing to drop deep and and let Mora kind of run up top. And I it's so much better seeing him just his positioning up is further up the pitch than it has been since they've been back. So I think that's is, more important to him. Is Erickson healthy enough? I mean, he's kind of managing an in, an injury. So I wouldn't be surprised if he only played, he's not going to be as nailed as he has been in the past. So I, I wouldn't mm. be surprised if he only played like two out of every three matches, as opposed to just 90, 90, 90 in every match like he has in the past. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's move on to the Mo or No Sala topic. Uh, all this smack talk this past game week uh, was some of those long-time fantasy managers who own Mo Sala, but got burned selling him in favor of another, another player, uh, Hazard, Sterling, uh, Sané possibly, who ended up getting no points. Uh, last week, Sala exploded for three goals against Bournemouth. Many managers were waiting for that, posting 21 points and collecting three all, all three bonus. Now, I don't feel bad. Like I said, I sold them two weeks ago, along with Aguero and Arnie, and I, I got Kane, uh, Son, and Aubameyang. So I collected 33 points that game week. So even with Sala hitting this week, I'm still ahead, I feel, in the no Sala game. Uh, this week, Liverpool host United, or is it the other way around? Yeah, Maybe Liverpool they, host United. Yeah, Liverpool do host United. Um, and uh, Arsenal and City in game week 20 and 21. So what do we do with Mo? Does he stay or does he go? I know we touched on this just a little bit, uh, and I, I'm sort of sounding like Dr. Seuss here with all the, the Mo Salah rhymes. But over the last four weeks, Salah has 24 penalty touch to lead all midfielders, along with those four goals, nine attempts, eight from inside the box, Three big chances, Casey. Again, you own them, and you've already said your plans are to keep them. You'll reevaluate a little bit later on after the city game. Yeah, well, I kind of am in a unique opportunity, uh, like a unique spot where I have I have all of the captain options. The only, the only, the only two of the five, I think there are five or six premium assets that everyone kind of wants in their team. And that's, I mean, you know, the cheaters talked about this a lot and I, other, other pods have talked about this. It was Sala, Aubameyang, um, Hazard, Sterling, Kane. And I think three of them are the big two, two really two of them are the big captaincy options. I think it's Sterling and I think it's Kane. I think those are the best captaincy options. Aubameyang to a lesser extent. And so Salah is not really a captain option, but I have two good captain options. And I don't think Hazard's a great captain option. So he's going to tick along. He's going to do fine. 
um, over this period, but I don't know. He doesn't look explosive because he's not really shooting um, inside the box. He's had quite a few shots from outside the box lately. So I think if you don't have two good captain options, and I'm not including Salah in this, so if you don't have Aubameyang, two of the three of either Aubameyang, Kane, or Sterling, I think you should sell, or I think I see the argument in selling Salah to fund one of those. But if you have two good captain options and Salah, I don't see any reason why you would want to sell him. Anything to add, Gabe? Or we can go on to the, the combinations here in the midfield. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think just leading up to the, those those combinations, I, I really think that uh, in, in this case, whereas last year, I think we're, we're still kind of judging things under last year's paradigm where of like Salah being essential or not essential. And I don't think it's really the kind of binary anymore. It, it does depend on team construction and the combination of players you have. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that leads us into the, the best premium combination now for the, you know, like you said, the uh, sake of the argument here, the big six, Salah, Kane, Sterling, Aubameyang, Aguero, and Hazard. Um, and the comment, you can't own them all. It does ring true, but which combinations will be more productive. If if I would have done my chart here ahead of last week's game, Salah would not have been included in probably the top five. Now that he hits for 21 points, I mean, he's on 111 for the season. He's leading all other scores as Sterling now chases him by five and Hazard at 103. So, I mean, they're all within nine, uh, eight points of each other here. Um, but, I mean, you start looking at uh, Salah's numbers and, uh, I mean, he's he's – He's he's right up there. I, I mean, Kane is another one. I mean, I think Casey, you're sitting well with both Kane and Sala as well as Sterling. I mean, you have multiple caption op captain options going forward. Myself, I've got Kane and Aubameyang with Sané now. I mean, Sané is not really that premium midfielder, but I mean, I, I think he's high enough price and and well enough. Not that I'll ever captain him. Yeah, he's good value though. He's good he value, and you have two captain options. Just like I said, you have two captain yeah. options, which is the most important thing. And I think that, Obama, honestly, I think I've seen a lot of people talk about this. I think the Obama Yang Kane captaincy rotation is actually the best one. So I think you have the best two captaincy options of, yeah. of all of them. Yeah. And, you know, we'll, excuse me, we'll see what happens here in, in the next coming weeks. Kane this week, obviously, Obama Yang next week. Yep. So, but uh, still, I mean, all the midfielders leading all the forwards, I, I, I think we sort of expected that. And, um, Gabe, yeah. how confident are you with the midfield that you've put together or the, the big six combination you've put together? I I mean I'm I, I see it a, a more of a <clears throat> of a fluid way. I, I think you have to I, I don't know, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this in the past few days for some reason and, and it's it's akin to uh, um what keeps going through my mind is is surfing. If um you have to kind of ride the wave of of the big six combination and if the uh, you know, fixture and form are like the, the swell and the wind or something like that, right? It has to be like ju just the perfect kind of rise is you have to read their form, you have to plan for their upcoming fixtures and just kind of navigate within them. And as you do that, be mindful to not lose too much value. Uh, so I think it's just something that needs to be played very organically and mindfully. All right, so yeah, I, I sat here at work today doing the best combinations, and obviously there's 20 permutations. I think you guys have seen them all. Um, no surprise, Solid Features in 4 out of 5. Sterling is also in 4 out of 5. Aubameyang Hazard each in 3 out of the uh, top 5 permutations, and then Kane in 2. But again, Gabe, I, I do agree with what you said. There's some fluidity to it. You sort of go where you think the points are going to be, the swells, the lows, and uh, you know you, you base it off form, you base it off fixture going ahead. Not to say that Salah isn't a bad pick, as Casey uh, has alluded to, but uh, it's it's definitely going to be interesting here over the next uh, two, three game weeks to see just what happens with all these premium premium price players in the midfield and forward positions. Yeah, I think, I think Gabe is right. I don't think Salah is essential in the way that he was last year, um, probably just because of his price. Um, mm -hmm. And you don't need to captain him. You're not afraid because, you know, 80% of the live teams have him and, and you know, ha at least half of those are captaining him every week. It, it, the fear factor with not owning him is not as high as it was last year. Um, so I can, does he, yeah. does, does he end up leading the league in scoring again? 
Uh, maybe. This is about the time. I mean, I, I, I guess a lot of us were caught up last year, you know, with him being such a good asset early on just for his price. He was taken along. He was very consistent. He got a lot of, like, one-goal games. And he actually – it wasn't until this time of year that he started getting those mega hauls last year. So – it was almost like this last year where he was very consistent and every week he got at least a goal or an assist and he rarely blanked. I think there was one time where he went like nine games out of 10 with an attacking return, but he didn't have a whole lot of braces or hat tricks until the second half of the season. And so I think he could turn into that. And just from the eye test, he looks like he could be doing that again. Um, but I don't think it's going to be too hard to get back on him because you don't have it last year, his value, you know, he had so much value tied up in him. If you got him early, it was hard to bring him back this year. You're selling him at the price you got him at the beginning of the year. So it's a lot easier to get him back. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's okay to sell him. I, 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 I am keeping him, but that doesn't mean that it's the only option. I think it's definitely okay to sell him. Um, but just from what I've seen from the eye test the last three or four weeks, like a start, I mean, starting four or five weeks ago, he was really, you know, looking like the old Sala, um, getting into good spaces, and you know, he had some bad luck. Uh, a lot, he was cre very being very creative. His the people that on the end of the crosses, especially Mane, uh, weren't finishing them, and then really the Bournemouth or the Burnley game. He came on with 25 minutes to go and looked at an entirely different beast. Um, he had two shots on target and two big chances created in 20 minutes. So, I mean, everyone looks good against Burnley. But then he looked great against Bournemouth. And then he looked probably the best I've seen him of all the games from the eye test was against Napoli. Um, he obviously had the goal. He hit the post. Um, he had another one-on-one -on -one that he just, you know, got, let the ball get a little too far away from him. But if he controls that a little better, it's a tap-in. So he could easily have hat tricked against a very good Napoli team, and I, I just think that he looks fantastic. So unless you're unless you're downgrading him to Sterling, who's a captain option, or downgrading him to upgrade a mid-priced forward to get to Aubameyang or Kane, who's a, a captaincy option, I just don't see the value in in getting rid of him. Yeah, this time last year, he had 13 goals and four assists um, from 11 through 14. He had 2-2-1-2, two, two, two. but, uh, I mean, he went on a streak of 1-2-3-4-5-6-7-8-9-10-11-12. 12 out of 13 weeks where he returned a goal or an assist over that period from game week 9 through game week 21. Yeah, this was when he this is when he caught fire last year. And yeah, he and then like he's doing it again. And then he missed the out. The celebration it. thing is so crazy. Like he is not celebrating his goals right now. He yeah. looks like he looks possessed. You know, he missed out in game week twenty two, but I mean, he picked up right where he started off. You know, he he returned in the next. It looks like eleven, missing out only in two weeks. So uh, you know, that included four goals against the uh, mighty Watford. But um, <laughs> you know, this so is about. The argument against Salah, right, is it's fixtures and compared to, to the rest of the five. And, and yeah, this exactly. This he, where... You don't want to captain him. That's the thing. Is he's not the he's not the captain option. But if you have two captain options and him, exactly. then just keep him. But if you don't yeah. have two captain options, then you need to be moving into somebody who's going to be heavily captain every single week. And then um, this is where I, I think process is is the important thing here. So so that that's Casey's process right there, and I, I think that that's great advice. Is I have as as long as you have options, you're not you should never feel pigeonholed into captaining one player, right? Just, and right, and maybe a player that you wouldn't be excited to captain. Um, so so that's that's the kind of, that's the process you should use going into kind of the, this this period and the rest of the season holding Salah. And in my situation, I have I currently have Sterling, Obama, Yang, and, and Hazard, and, and I I agree. I, I'm not probably not going to captain Hazard. But I'm not going to go much past Sterling or Obama Yang either. Um, so similar kind of situation there. And one thing I, I tried covering Kane with uh, by with Erickson, and it hasn't exactly worked out. Like looking back, I think the uh, the correct choice would have been maybe Obama Yang and Kane, and, and divest out of the midfield a little bit. But I'm but at least I'm covered. So there will be when you make mistakes, uh, kind of at the high level with the high prices you should try to cover yourself as well as, as moving forward so you can give yourself time to adapt. Yeah. Well, it's going to be easy for you to move back to Salah 
whenever you need to from Hazard um, or from Ericsson by downgrading exactly. one of the other premium assets. It's it's going to take a double move. It's not going to be that bad. Um, so and that and you didn't you didn't lose any value by selling him. So that's the other thing. Just you can sell him this year without worrying about losing all your team value. And I'm so, interested in in Kuhn and in Aweto when he comes back. I am I'm very interested while keep holding on to Sterling. Yeah, well, I'm expecting to go Kane to Aguero sometime in January. <laughs> That's just mm -hmm. I kind of already penciled that in. It's just it's just a matter of when the fixtures are done being all squished together, and we get one game a week for City again, where you know it's just going to be Aguero every week because he's first choice when he's healthy. How mm -hmm. the mighty have fallen. He's down to 23.7, and he was well over 50% to start the season. You know, it's also interesting to note we talk about a bombing. He's 48.9% owned across the FPL if you take out the inactive squads, but he's nowhere to be found on the top 1,000. So mm -hmm. I, that, that's something that, you know, is, is interesting. I don't know if it's going to play into, you know, what's going to happen with captain decisions. He's owned by 41%. I, I so, there might be a why. top thousand because of that. <laughs> well, you have Jimenez at forty-seven percent, Wilson at sixty-three, so he just misses out on that third forward spot with Jimenez grabbing it at forty-seven percent. Mm. But he hits this week. Chances are he's going to get more owners. He's going to bump back up like we saw last week where he picked. Well, he's up got Burnley next week, which is yeah, great. It'll be, I know. It, honestly, if you really want to play that hokey cokey, you could captain Kane this week. Next week, sell Kane for a mm. Yang, Captain uh, Bami Yang, and then. As long as, as long as you kept like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 in the bank, uh, to get rid, you know, to to cover any rises you've had, you could go straight back to, to uh, uh, Kane again. Yeah, I, I I can understand why people shy away from Obama Yang though. I mean, he only has uh, 15 shots on target all season. The the thing is, he has 10 goals. Which you know he's high high percentage there. You know Harry Kane has twenty seven shots on target, um, nine goals, right? So yeah, and most of those have come in the last like eight game weeks. Which you know he's showing a little bit more statistically than he has. He's still not the old Harry Kane, but this right. is the this is also kind of the time of year. The more he plays, it seems the better he is. Um, and he's had his rest. I don't know. Harry he looks, Kane's he also looks, played about one hundred and fifty more minutes than Obama Yang. Uh, and he has one less goal, so th there are. I, I can see why because the uh, that there aren't. He's not providing many opportunities, or you know, he's he's not hitting many shots. But when you kind of dig into the numbers, I I do have a little more faith in Obama, especially for for explosive returns. And explosive returns on a captain are obviously you know uh, compounded. So I I I think he's I think he's going to show something. In, in the next uh, week or two here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the only the only real worry about um, Aubameyang is Lacazette and and Emery. Uh, I just <laughs> I still don't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. La, I mean, Lacazette played Lacazette played uh, in the Europa League today and. Everyone's like, oh, great, Aubameyang's first choice. This is wonderful. Mm -hmm. He's pulled off on the hour, and then you start to think, oh, maybe he's still just trying to get fitness back because he had two 45s and then a 60 in the in the Europa League. Maybe he really is just trying to get him back to full fitness. All of a sudden, what happens if Lacazette starts, you know, instead of Aubameyang in two of the next four fixtures? Sure, then you've got problems. I, I think the more likely uh, lens, though, is is that he's trying to keep Lacazette happy. It's like, here, don't worry, you. like you get time, you're still, you know, Maybe. essential. It's it's, essential it's hard part. to say. It just depends on. It just I just don't know. We haven't had a a, a healthy we haven't had a healthy Lacazette with three at the back yet. All season, so we still have no idea. Well, I mean, he started two, both of them up top with three at the back at the in the last game, and then pulled Lock off at halftime. I don't know if that was tactical or just Locka still hasn't played more than thirty to forty-five minutes in two months because he's. But it's worked much. It's worked much better with Obama Yang than than Locka's that hasn't it? Arsenal re recently with Obama Yang have just been on fire. Right. Right, right. That's true. It's true. I, I, I still think that uh, Aubameyang is is pretty safe. Mm -hmm. 
it'll be interesting. It, I think they probably match each other more or less. Um, so I think it's probably just a little safer to go Kane. But if it, but mm -hmm. there's a pretty good chance that uh, you'll fly if a bomby if you got a bombing and Kane does not hit. So. And I am keeping my fingers crossed that happens. You have both, so that's great. As long as you, as long as you nail captaincy, Stephen, you're going to be. Yeah, that's it. As, as long as you nail a captaincy, I mean that's yeah. that's it. I mean, if if you miss your captaincy, like I mean, Gabe and I did with a bombing, and I know he vice captain Solo this week. I mean that that red error he had picked up this week easily would have been a green error, and he would have been up even higher in the table or the overall ranking. So let's uh, move on defense over this festive pileup. And I, I think we do have a good sample size uh, with our four teams, even though Garf isn't here when it comes to defenders. Casey, you have one premium defender in Robertson. Uh, I believe Garf has uh, Alonzo and you both own Doherty. Well, not a, a uh, premium defender. He's He's been that, that budget defender who's made his way into a, a majority of the teams. Gabe, you have Alonzo, TAA, and Laporte, as well as Robertson. And as for mm -hmm. myself, I've got Alonzo Robertson, Van Dyke, and Laporte. So, Gabe, what are your thoughts uh, as it relates to defenders over this festive period? Do you think the premium defenders are going to be immune to the rotation? And is there better value in possibly running out some more budget options and saving that money in order to bolster the midfield where a bulk of the points seem to be coming from this year? I think what the, 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 what the three game weeks you know, we taught us last week is that we – can no longer, at least for, for, for a little while, rely on uh, on clean sheets as much as we used to. And moving forward, and, and I think Casey predicted this a, a couple of weeks ago, that during th this period, it's the, any which way, the goals just kind of seem, seem to drop. So so I, I, I've, I'm i planning, I'm going to Laporte to, to I think, at Schindler um, is, is going to be my choice there. Uh, so just to get get some money out of that line and move it into midfield, which I need to um, to get that David Silva out now that he now now that he's hurt and then get uh, Hazard. So I I say move move money out of there and get attacking get attacking defenders, um, budget attacking defenders, which uh, coincidentally they're they're kind of all right around five million. Um, all these like five million defenders I think would be great during this during this period. Um, I would, wouldn't rely so much on the kind of clean sheet defenders, the central defenders. Um, I'd rely on those less. Yeah, one, th one thing I'd say about the Laporte move is I think City will keep more clean sheets than most of the other teams over this period because most of their clean sheets are purely just because they possess the ball so much and not because of their defenders are being rotated and there's different combinations of defenders at the back. I think Man City's defense is God awful. Like actually as a defense, if another team comes at them, they can see it a lot of goals. You just saw, you see that in champions league. I don't think they've kept a single clean sheet in all six of their matches in the champions league. And I think it's just because they really are bad at defense, but well, they, they didn't play well against Watford. I mean, I think Watford no, looked into a no, goal. But, Watford was but one thing goal. that will happen though with city is they'll just possess the ball for 80% of the match. And so it doesn't really matter. You know, they've got a better chance of just kind of lucking into a clean sheet by the other team, just not getting the ball as much. Um, as opposed to the other teams where the rotation in the defense, you know, is going to cause some weird partnerships. And then just the fatigue um, is going to cause issues, but because there's such a big squad that's talented and they are, are rotated so much, I don't think they're going to suffer from as much fatigue as some of these other sides. So I don't have a city defender. I don't have a really good way of getting one. And I think they're probably the safest over this period. Plus they have really good fixtures. Um, they probably have the best uh, clean sheet potential fixtures too, because they have Everton home and, and, and uh, they've got uh, Crystal Palace home. Who else do they have? I mean, it's, it's, it's a crazy run where there's like five of their next eight could easily be, or six of their next eight could easily be clean sheets. So yeah, they have Everton Palace at home, a Leicester Southampton away. Then they get Liverpool at home, followed by Wolves away to Huddersfield, away to Newcastle through uh, the end of January. That's crazy. That's an insane amount of clean sheets probably that they'll get just because they're going to possess the ball by 80, you know, 8%. I, I'd say if there's anyone to sell, it's Alonzo. And I did, I've already done it. And here's why he's had two attacking returns in 12 matches. 
But again, you don't buy a defender for their attacking returns. But they don't have. But they don't have clean sheets either. So uh, they a, haven't. Well, this is what we've been talking about. No one's been getting clean sheets. Um, Chelsea, you know, they did really well against City, and I think they're going to get a couple of clean sheets over the next six games. They've got a really good, um, really good uh, a run here. Um, but, they're second in the league with clean sheets. They have eight. They're two behind Liverpool, tied with Man City. Sure. I mean, they, they've done fine. Um, but again, like I said, just this is the period of the year where you don't get clean sheets. And if you can't rely on the clean sheet points as a baseline or a defense, all of a sudden you look, okay, well, how attacking are they? Well, Alonzo is probably like the eighth best attacking defender right now. He really has been awful. His stats are down. His positioning has been poor. He's really been reined in. Since the first four game weeks, he's not even the top three goal, uh, defender in points. So... I don't know. I just don't see the value. Also, I just don't see how he's going to hurt you. I mean, like really, really hurt you. I mean, he's very highly owned. Yes, but no one's going to captain him. So what is his point ceiling? 10, 11, 12 points. So if he gets a 12 pointer with zero captains, okay, you're going to be, I don't know, six points down on the field. If you don't have Kane and, and, and 50% of the people you know, have captained him and 80% own him, you're going to be 30 points down on the field if he, if he hits. So I, I just, he's just not as, he can't hurt you as much as a premium attacker at this time of year. The thing is, uh, the thing with Alonzo, Alonzo has, uh, has our syndrome in a way. So sure, in one week, he'll, he'll, he'll hurt you, he'll, he'll ding you for 10 if you don't have him. But he'll do that for three weeks in a row. And then all of a sudden those 10 become 30. And sure, nobody's captained them. But he's he's hitting that everybody's rushing to get in. Then uh, next thing you know, you're taking hits to try to get this guy in to grab him in form, knowing that he's going to be probably the highest scoring defender in the game at the end of the season. I oh I'm in a, I'm not saying that get rid of Alonzo forever. I'm just saying that get rid of Alonzo while you can't really trust teams to keep clean sheets because his baseline points are going to be way down and his attacking returns aren't great until he starts looking attacking. I mean, after that first week, I'm going to definitely be thinking about, you know, that first return, if he looks great, I'm going to be thinking about getting him in. But you don't have to find a lot of money to get him in. A long, uh, he's $7 million, and if you have Robertson, it's point, point – you're, you're selling – you're like point eight to get him in. It's not hard to get him in. It's not hard to get him in like it is to get a Sterling in. If you had to go from, like, Erickson to Sterling, you have to find $2 million. It's it's way easier to find you know one million or or less to get Alonzo in. It's just it's not hard as hard to get him back in. I just don't think that. he's he's mm -hmm. had five returns over the last seven weeks. I mean, yeah, but he's had but, two attacking returns in twelve. Well, yeah, all that's five, what I was all getting. All five of all five of those could have been Louise, and you would get the same points. And sure, that's a million and a half cheaper. So I just, but I, I, I don't I, see his value right now. I, I agree with Gabe that all it takes is one week and. Everybody's talking about, I got to get Alonzo back into my defense. Yeah, but points-wise, where are you really at? Six points down? It's not really a big no, deal. Possibly, yeah. No six one's points captained or so. him. No. It's, it's, it, I just don't – he doesn't scare me. You know, he's going to be – he's going to do fine. He's going to return for owners, but I just don't see his value right now, and he doesn't scare me because he's not going to hurt me by one good week because no one's going to captain him. See, now I have trouble moving off Laporte. I got the double city defense with Ederson and goal and, and Laporte after Mindy got hurt. I brought Laporte in. But now I have problem moving Laporte, and what I see is a lateral move over to Doherty. Sure, he's had three attacking returns in three weeks, but Wolves haven't kept a clean sheet in eight weeks. Yeah, I save 0.9 if I make that transfer, which I could obviously use in a, a decimated midfield that I'm looking at here, but... Uh, again, I mean, you look at the run of, uh, of fixtures for both these clubs and, and City on paper, you know, like you said, it could be potentially five clean sheets out of six. You look at Wolves, and I mean, they have Liverpool at home, they have Spurs away, they have City away through January 14th. I mean, they got easy games in between, but I, you know, I, I don't know if you can trust Wolves to get a clean sheet here out of the next month. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that's, I don't like that. I'd keep Laporte. I honestly, I'd downgrade Alonzo to Laporte if you had if you had that right now. That saves you a million dollars, and I bet Laporte outscores Alonzo over the next six to eight game weeks, just because City are going to keep more clean sheets than Chelsea. City has one clean sheet in the last six. I I, I don't know why anybody has any confidence that they're going to have clean sheets moving forward when 
in my opinion, what, what they're lacking, what their, their back line is lacking this season is bite. And Nico Otamendi brings that bite. What company, when he's fit, can bring that bite. And they, all they have back there is finesse. So when, when they have big big players running at them or fast players running at them, they, they struggle a little bit. And I, don't, I see them continuing to struggle for, for a little while, despite their, I mean, decent fixtures. I, I would say, you know, Palace, Palace is a good fixture for sure. I don't think Leicester away is, is, is a very good fixture. Southampton is obviously a good fixture. And then Liverpool. I, and I don't think the this weekend's the fixture against Everton is actually a good fixture. No, I don't um, think that's a great fixture. But I don't know. I my my gut I see two clean sheets in the next six for 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 City. Maybe my my, my my gut is they're going to be less tired than other teams though because they have such a big squad and they've been rotating all along. And so I just I just think that just by having you know. Um, by having fresher legs and a game, a game style that's 70, 75% possession, they're just going to get more clean sheets in a period where not a lot of them are to be had. I don't think they're going to keep seven clean sheets in a row. I don't think anyone's going to get close to that over this period, but I think they have the best chance of getting them of any team. I call under three. I'm calling the under on three. In their next six <laughs> or eight? In the next... Uh... Uh, get up here. Um, and Casey, part of the reason I'm keeping Alonzo, he's 67.1% owned in the top 1,000 compared to 3.2 for David Luiz. That's right. Six points for each of them if they only get the clean sheet, but you still have a huge attacking potential. I think bigger is than it, Luiz. Is it, well, is it huge though? Two, it two, is. Two assists in 12 games no, though? No, but I, I, I maybe, maybe we're living too much off of what he did last year. You're right. Uh, well, but, he looked like last year in the first four game weeks just because of his positioning and his stats, but since then his stats aren't even. Uh, Casey doing what Casey does best, dropping out here. Casey thing. Um, stats <laughs> wise, yeah. I, Is he back? There. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah st stats wise, I, I think he's he he's 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 got something there. I, I mean, Alonso's only got thirty six penalty touches compared to Doherty's forty nine. Um, they both have 23 attempts inside the box. Obviously, Doherty's been you know, a little bit hotter here recently. Uh, 19 shots inside the box to Alonzo's 14. Um, so, what, what, what period was this? Over uh, this, the is, last... this is all season. I, I just so, threw up all so season. So take out the first four game weeks, and it's like, it's, oh, like, it's, a ghost, it's, like, it's like a ghost town. Yeah. If you take out those first four game weeks, Alonzo's stats are – I don't know what I don't know where they rank, but they're probably worse than you know most defenders in the game, most wingbacks in the game at least, right? Or or or, or fullbacks. It, it, he just stays so far back because they're playing a lot more possession. Um, they're trying to be a lot more solid at the back. Um, he just doesn't he doesn't he doesn't move up the pitch as far as he used to, and he's gotten a couple of assists. He's still going to trickle some in, but. I just don't think it justifies the price when you, the baseline points of clean sheets could be had by, by Louise. Fair enough. Let's move into uh, hits and some early transfers here. So how, how are we dealing with rotation uh, over the season or over this festive period? I think all managers have been hit fairly hard the last few weeks, uh, witnessed by some of the average scores and many, many fantasy managers probably feel burned to some degree. Uh, it seems all the premium players have been rotated. Nobody is immune to the the rotation. It's like Pep is now on all twenty teams in the uh, in the Premier League. We know hits are a part of the game. Um, Gabe, how's your bench? Have you taken any hits to work some players in in fear of the rotation? Uh, I took hits. I'll be taking a hit this week. Uh, I took a hit last week to get one of those heavy hitters in for uh, Obama Yang, and that, that that one didn't work out. The, the hits I'm taking this week, I feel pretty confident in, since it involves uh, injured players, and and I think that's that's really the lesson. Uh, I, the early lesson I learned here is to, if if you take hits when, when necessary, definitely don't. This is kind of the time to take them, not when everything is is, is okay. So just to kind of keep up and make sure you have players that are playing. Uh, you know, if you're taking a hit for an injured player, Alexander Arnold this weekend, for example, your you know your your risk is is significantly diminished. Um, so, yeah, I'd say be smart about it, but but also don't 
don't be too shy about it or else that, that could hurt you even more. Casey, what have you have? I, I know we were talking before one on air about taking, making an early transfer. We we're talking about Wilson and TAA holding some of these guys until we hear the, the Thursday, the Friday pressers to see, you know, possibly if we get any idea what's, what's going to happen to somebody like a Wilson who was somewhat of a game time flag for for many managers didn't have time to go in and, and swap him out yeah i think it's still a good time to be patient um and wait for the press conferences to get information on injuries but i i don't think i could have said any better than gabe did um it's a great time to take hits for injured players i would not take hits otherwise i wouldn't ma do major restructures of your team during this fixture pile up i think the last couple of weeks was the time to do that uh to get your team in a structure where you were happy with it um, at this point, it's about managing the hamstring injuries and the and the knocks and all of the the problems that we're going to get over the next few weeks, and just deal with those. And if you're transferring out two, if you're doing a double swap with for a minus four of two, um, you know, two injured players, there's a really good chance you're just going to make that right back up with the appearance points. Um, you know, it's basically like no hit. Um, occurred. So I, I, I definitely think hits are good this time of year, as long as at least one, one injured player is involved. Um, but I would wait till the information is out. So wait till the press conferences, wait till you know for sure who's out. And, and there might be some surprises, which might change how you do your transfers. Yeah. I blame Gar for my minus eight, two weeks ago. I, I honestly had no, no thought in my mind that I was going to be taking a minus eight. And <laughs> yeah, maybe it was a peer pressure. I, I don't know, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm thankful I did. Uh, I do think my team is stronger than what it was. Um, you know, I, I did, as you said, I did have an injury with Tarnatovic. It was the week before he, he, he didn't start. I, I think it was didn't play or came off early. I forgot what it was. It was a week that uh, Lucas Perez came on and scored too. So, yeah. you know, I, I got lucky. I, I mean, I, you know, talking about riding waves, I hit the wave on Sané correctly. I hit the wave on Kane and Aubameyang properly. And, you know, Aguero took a dive. And I mean, I think I made almost, uh, what, a million, million one over the last week. I mean, I'm well over 104 million right now, which is shocking when it comes to team value. But um, you like you guys, I'm, I, I can't make any early transfers this deep into the season. It's, it's going to be a wait and see. Uh, through the rest of December, uh, you know, the big one right now, Wilson. I, I mean, he's going to basically determine what I do for this week when it comes to my my two free transfers that I have. So uh, speaking of transfers and captains, Casey, who do you plan on captaining this week? Uh, unless I hear any weird um, things from Potch tomorrow, it'll be Harry Kane. Um I feel okay about it. I never feel great about captaining Harry Kane. Um, sometimes it comes off great. Sometimes it doesn't, but it's a pretty big shield pick this week where it's, it's really about the rest of my squad, whether I get a green arrow or a red arrow. If I just captain Harry Kane, then I kind of ensured that I'm going to get either a small red or a small green, and I'm okay with that for right now. So I think it's just kind of the, the shield pick and um, – yeah, I'm okay with that. So I'm just going to go with Harry Kane. And I'm going to make some defensive transfers this week. Um, I've got two injured players, uh, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold and Frederico Fernandez. Um, I don't think I'm going to transfer both of them for a minus four or whatever. That does – I'm not really – I can hide uh, one player. I have two playing bench players and um, other than Fernandez, so I'm okay with um, just – sticking him on the bottom third bench slot and having two, two subs in case I need it for this weekend. It's not, I don't think there's going to be as much rotation this week. There'll be some, but I don't think it'll be crazy. It won't be as crazy as it will be over like boxing day, new year's, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I probably only expect to get one or two players off the bench this week. I don't think I'll need all three. Um, so yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I just need to find a TAA replacement so I can get Luis. That's going to be the real shield pick um, to cover Alonzo. Like I've said, I think Chelsea will keep some clean sheets. Um, 
And I don't know, maybe Alonzo will get a couple of cat tacking returns, but that really, if I get Louise, then it will really only be, you know, three, four, five points on loss on the field. If he, if Alonzo gets an attacking return um, and keep, and they keep a clean, clean sheet. So I can't, it's not going to be a big deal. Um, but I'm also thinking about some crazy things like going with like class and etch or um, maybe Lovren or someone like that to, to keep double Liverpool defense. Um, Lovren looks like he's assured to be a starter now that Matip and, and Gomez are out injured. Um, and at 4-9, I don't know. Liverpool can keep some clean sheets, even with bad fixtures. I mean, they've – I don't know. I think they've kept two or three clean sheets in the, in the Champions League, and they've kept 10 clean sheets in 16 games this year in the Premier League. So – I mean, they've kept over 50% clean sheets in all competitions this year. So, including City, including Napoli, including, um, you know, uh, Bournemouth, and, and they've just, they, they can keep out good offenses. So, I'm not, I don't know. Double Liverpool still feels good. Um, mm-hmm. I still kind of want Lov- Lovren because um, he's, you know, 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8. 0.8 cheaper now than um, than uh, Louise, and I think they can keep similar amount of clean sheets, even though Chelsea have much better fixtures. So I do don't you know. Have, do you have to move Trent? Because I'm not moving him. I don't know. It depends. It depends on what I hear in the press conference tomorrow. If how hurt he is, right. um, if he's out for three weeks, that could be five game weeks or six game weeks. Um, so if he's out one week. Yeah, sure, I'll hold them. Mm-hmm. Problem is, is I've got a second defender who's also injured. And so right. that would mean that I'd be playing with my only three defenders. I'd have to start Isaac Success, which is fine. It doesn't bother me. It's two points, whatever. Um, but then if I lose, if, if, one of, if the rotation hits my defense, then I'm playing with two defenders. I don't really like that. Um, so if it's a one-week injury, I'll keep TAA. If I hear that he's out for three or four weeks which isn't really a long injury, but in this time of year, that's a lot of game weeks. Um, I'll probably move him. Uh, Klasinac is still kind of, <laughs> he's kind of the fun pick because he has like tasty. He's like in the box. He just lives in the box, but he doesn't care. No. <laughs> just and, care. and Arsenal, oh. Arsenal aren't great at defense, but they'll like their, their fixtures are so good yeah. that they'll probably luck into like, I don't know, two, two clean sheets. And then if he gets a couple of assists, all of a sudden, pretty good i don't know i i I don't know it's tough i i really don't know what i'm going to do with my transfer tomorrow um yeah i i I probably will move taa though because i think he's pro i've I've heard that he's out a couple of weeks and that's probably enough to move him on since that means he'll probably miss at least like four game weeks so yeah gabe transfer captain so my transfer Pretty straightforward. Uh, I, I needed to move on. Uh, I needed to move the port in order to afford the uh, the David Silva to Hazard move, and so I just basically corrected my mistake of uh, bringing uh, David Silva in. And have Hazard feels good. Feels good with the, with the fixtures coming up. Uh, feels good that that a lot of the top one thousand have him as well. Uh, thanks for bringing that to <laughs> to our attention there, Stephen. Constantly, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna start considering that a lot more. Uh, I'm I'm holding Alexander Ar- Arnold. I yes, I expect the yeah, I expect it to be about two weeks. I I don't think he'll miss uh, the the entire time, given how how banged up that back line is, though. And I don't really see kind of similar value um, at if by by moving up. But there is value kind of across the board. But it's very much a temporary sideways transfer that, that for me is too much of a luxury when I have. Just, just some other smaller fires to put out, but that I, I really enjoy that kind of that category of, of defender. The five million you have Doherty, Dean, Trent, uh, Kolasinac, Delph is at five point three. If he's going to be playing consistently for um, for Mendy, uh, is you know Stones. He's played ninety in the last two. He's at five point three as well. Hurt um, wow. Pereira at Chilwell, Keane, and Lovren. It's such a huge group. All of them with really interesting potential. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind kind of maximizing that, even, even maybe moving down from one of the more expensive assets 
and just going all the five million for the, those bigger teams. I think that would be an interesting approach. But no, I'm going straight up. The um, my captain, my captain. Here's another thing I was reading. So I'm going up Obama Yang with, with my captain. It it feels good. It feels, but I don't know if that's just excitement and adrenaline. I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> um, but you know, Southampton had they conceded 16 in the last six. Uh, sure, one of those was a six goals to to City, but they also conceded to Cardiff. Um, they conceded, I think, three to Fulham. Uh, so it it feels okay. Sterling, him starting midweek, I think, kind of turned me off to Sterling. Otherwise, I'd I'd be all over it. It's kind of not quite set and forget. I still want to think about my captain, but almost. Uh, so I'm gonna. I, I think I'm gonna roll with Obama Yang unless I make a last minute change that I might regret. Saturday will be interest. Saturday evening will be interesting for you because. If Kane blanks, or even if he just like gets an assist or something weird like that, you're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, Sunday, come <laughs> uh-huh. on, baby, this is gonna be green arrows." And but if he like, if he goes off, you're gonna have a really tough night sleeping because you're well, like, here's... "Oh man, I have to wait 24 <laughs> hours for Aubameyang to come in, and let's hope he matches him." So so remember we, we've been talking about that the way my team is kind of designed is to is for to take I may, I may take several small red arrows. But when I hit a green arrow, it should hit pretty hard. And I think by putting the captaincy on Obama Yang, it'll help me really climb up those, you know, I'm at 39K now. And and like like Stephen was saying, not many of the top owners have Obama Yang, let alone are captaining Obama Yang. So I'm hoping for that catapult. And I and I feel I still feel I have Kane covered with by having Ericsson. So if you know whatever Kane produces, if Ericsson can be involved somehow, I feel like I'll still be there. Uh, so I, I'm I'm hoping you know after three red arrows, this small red this is the the week of the big green. Uh, as for me, as I said, I have uh, two free transfers, and I, I just have seen that Will Hughes is now uh, confirmed out with an unknown return date due to a hip injury. So that means I may keep Goodmanson for another couple of weeks, even though he's got a flag, 75% chance he will play. Don't plan on starting him, but uh, I will be moving Pascal Gross. That move. Didn't work out. Uh, Felipe Anderson will come in. He's most likely going to be a placeholder for uh, for Casey's Richarlison. Uh, the ownership just too high. So uh, after 19, I will most likely get in on Richarlison, move Felipe Anderson, unless I do something in the defense. But uh, to replace Hughes, it's probably just going to be uh, Pierre Emil Hoiberg. I mean, he plays every game. He gets 90 minutes. He's got two goals on the season. Uh, His stats have been fairly good here the last couple of weeks in terms of shooting. Again, I don't plan on playing him as I'll be in a uh, probably a, uh, depends on Wilson, a a 4-3-3 this weekend. So Felipe Anderson and uh, Hoiberg will be my my two moves this week and uh, going with Kane this week as my captain. Sounds good. I I had a question for you, uh, both of you, in terms of uh, lineup and some, some decisions here. So I have Trent, who obviously is—is is it confirmed he's not starting this weekend? Um, mm-hmm. no. But there's the press conference is tomorrow, right? but he was seen today walking around in a boot. So that's not a good. Th- he has not trained, right? Um, with the team, he's in a boot. He's not even running, from what I've heard. So he's basically converted out for this week. But I, it, it'll be interesting to see the length of his injury. If he's, if if they think he'll be training with the team again next week, then I'll probably hold him. Right. Okay. Well, I was I was wondering because I have Schindler home to Newcastle and Juan Bissaka home to Leicester, a Vardy list Leicester at that on the bench. Just I kind of can't decide between the two of them. The other I like Schindler. Make, you like Schindler? I like Sh- I like Huddersfield this week to keep it clean. At least a draw, nil nil draw. Yeah, Huddersfield have been really good defensively. Especially um, Newcastle are they just don't score on the road. No, that's true. So, and then Richarlison versus success. Oh, Richarlison. Uh, yeah, I think you got to play Richarlison. I, I think mean, success yeah. starts. They have a good matchup, but he's been coming off at 75, and Watford's still having issues uh, putting the ball on the net, I mean, let alone scoring. I, I guess if I'm saying that City are, will only keep two cleans in the next five, I should play Richarlison. And yeah, I mean, he put has. My money where my boss is. Yeah, he has over half of Everton's goals this year. So, I mean, if anyone's going to score, it's probably going to be him. Yeah. 
Um, and, and when uh, when Stephen brings him in, I'm going to do the pigeon dance. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I would pl- I would I'd play Richarlison. I'd play. That's what I had in. I'd play Schindler. Although interesting stat, um, uh, Crystal Palace has shut out Leicester both of the last two times they've played them. So I, yeah, and there's no Vardy, and they and and. So what I would probably do is I would even put success second on your bench and I'd put Juan Basaka as first on your bench because I think he's probably got the best chance of returning six points. Um, and so if he has to come in as an auto sub, you're going to be, that'll be pretty, pretty sweet. If you got a six point auto, sh- well, he probably gets bonus points if they keep a clean sheet. So I, I'd put Juan Basaka first on your bench above yeah. success because success is just going to get you two points. Yeah. So, and, and if, you know, if, uh, what, if Juan Bazaka only gets you one point, that's one point loss, but I think there's a much higher, higher ceiling for him than success. Yeah, I agree. All right. That's going to do it for episode 24 of the academic of vertex. Thank you for listening. We're watching live on YouTube. Uh, looking forward to good scores, green arrows this week. That's good night for me. Good night, everybody. Good night guys.